This is always a fun game, Mark. I mean, like, it's almost always close. Now, I say that with a grain of salt because this Penn State team is really good, and it's really hard to play at Penn State. It's really hard to play in a whiteout at Penn State. Um, but I think back, you know, I think my memory as far as, like, the last 10 to 15 years watching this series, I, I mean, I'd say – three without even tracking it and I, I could go back and do that but i'd say 75 to 80 percent of these games are close 2008 was real close iowa wins on a final kick 2009 they get the block punt from claiborne in happy valley 2010 they beat them in kinnick uh 2012 they lost at kinnick a home game iowa was had some hype that year and the season just collapsed they went four and eight got killed so that was you know there's an example of one they they lost um i don't know about 2011 but obviously then flat i think they went several years without playing them 2016 they got killed at Penn State came back the next week beat Michigan and Kinnick that big upset behind CJ Beathard and Akram Wadley but then in 2018 it was close that was at uh, that was in Happy Valley um that was a rainy game Nate Stanley Noah Fant TJ Hawkins and those guys had a chance late Geno Stone had a pick six late Pennsylvania native and they lost 2019 was a home game they had a chance late but never really Never really felt like they were going to win that game, but they kept it close behind a circus catch from Brandon Smith. And then, of course, 2020, they won there. 2021, they won here. So it's been a close series. Did you miss the 2017 game down to the last second on the clock? 2017 game with Sean Clifford, Saquon. Yeah. That was the Saquon versus Josie matchup. And that when I went back and relived some of that the other day, I was like, heck of a game. Yeah, and they were, I made game. a comment the other day, they were both 3-0. It was the exact same game in the schedule. They were both 3-0 that year. Um, that game, the difference was it was a night game at Kinnick, yeah. and it uh, it lived up to the hype. Yeah, that Penn State team finished in the close to the top five in the country, uh, won a Fiesta Bowl. Yeah, and part of that's I mean I go back I know it's funny ever since I made a comment about how I think Iowa seems just just my feel my hunch is that Iowa plays better at home at night. I've had uh, some viewers, one specifically named Austin. I I don't know Austin's last name. But he's jumped on my post game show a couple of times, Mark, and he and I can even send you the. I'll have to forward these emails to you. He's actually went through the data and like has all the data from how Iowa's played against top twenty five teams at home, top twenty five teams at home at night, top twenty five teams on the road and on the road at night. And the data doesn't really is not a real strong indicator that they do play better at home at night, which I guess is a good thing for this Saturday because maybe that's an indication that. They have just as good of a shot if it, you know, if it was at home. I have a hard time believing that because a whiteout is insane. Um, I'll tell you the last time I, I think 2016 was a whiteout. Maybe Marty, when he jumps on here, can tell us. But 2009, that's really the one that stands out because, and, and Kirk brings it up every time he talks about this series. You, you probably remember that game as well as 14 years ago, Mark. But what first play of the, I think first play from scrimmage. They go, Penn State goes like 75 yards, Daryl Clark down to, I don't know who the receiver was, on a, on a busted play, and they strike gold on the first play from scrimmage, and that crowd is just absolutely insane. And so that's one thing that I, I, I kind of came to that realization today. If you're an Iowa fan, here's one strong reason to feel good. Not saying they're going to win, but feel strong reason to feel good is the fact that Iowa gave up several big plays on Saturday. And you may say, well, that doesn't make any sense, Corey. That's an indication that that's the reason to feel bad. They're not going to give up those plays this coming Saturday. I think that's a wake-up call. I don't care who it's against. They came out in the second half on Saturday, allowed just 35 yards to a bad Western Michigan team. But I would I would say there's a good chance those mistakes are not replicated this weekend. So that's why I'd say it's, it was good that they gave up those, those big pass plays in the first half Saturday. Folks, we take your comments and questions. Of course, the Super Chats stand out, so we get to those first, and then we don't guarantee we take every comment and question, but uh, we appreciate when you do uh, send those in. We got Marty Leap here from Penn State Rivals to uh, join the conversation and break this one down because this is a huge one right out of the gate in the Big Ten. Marty, how you doing today? Hey, Marty, can you hear us? My bad. I was still muted. There we are. I can't hear you. But no, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> Appreciate you being here uh, for a second consecutive day. So Marty joined us on the Big Ten Live show yesterday. So Marty, appreciate you coming back. Uh, I will get the 
conversation started. And then it might be best if I get out of the way because I got two very knowledgeable guys that can mix up a series that, again, I was racking my brain for cross-sectional games in the Big Ten. Michigan, Minnesota, that is a rivalry, regardless of how good or bad the series is. Ohio State, Illinois, some old-timers might say it's a rivalry. It's very one-sided, but they play for a trophy, blah, blah, blah. This has been the best game that I can come up with between one division foe going west east matchup that i can think of because yeah the the other ones would involve automatically on the eastern side ohio state and michigan and certainly ohio state has not had this kind of a series in regards to being pushed uh at all in the west so this has been quite the series marty yeah you know this penn state iowa series has been about as good as any in the country really for for quite a while i mean you go back even to 2008 when a trip to Kinnick kept Penn state out of the national championship game. You know, it's, it's, it's always back and forth. I mean, Corey, I know before I hopped on, I was in the waiting room, you mentioned some of the more lopsided games, you know, the 2020, the COVID year when Iowa came to Happy Valley and kind of curb stomped them. I think we both agree anything about COVID year you can throw out, but you know, 2016 Penn state, the last time Iowa played at Happy Valley under the lights, just really stuck it to them. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I definitely don't expect that Saturday night. These are two really good football teams, and just Iowa by their nature is very difficult to blow out because they are a team that with Phil Parker, you know, is always going to play great defense. Their offense is going to slow it down, shorten the game, shorten possessions. Um, but, yeah, Mark, I totally agree. You know, Penn State doesn't – and some of it's just because of when they came into the conference compared to these teams who have been there forever – has never really had that true natural rival in the Big Ten. But I would argue – in some ways, it's Iowa because there are two teams that, you know, since Penn State's joined the Big Ten, they're 11 and 11 against each other. They're always two good teams, are usually in the upper echelon of the Big Ten. And, you know, I think some of it too within the last decade plus, there's a lot of bad blood between Penn State and Iowa fans on the wrestling mats. A lot of that spills over to football and vice versa. So I think that's a factor as well. But most importantly, it's just I, I've always been a firm believer. You can't have a true rivalry if it's not an even series where games are close matchups. Both teams are regularly winning, and that's what you have here. Like I said, 11-11 and 11, since Penn State's joined the Big Ten in the mid-'90s. Games are almost always close. One instant classic after another. Um, so we'll see what happens Saturday night. I don't, I don't expect it to be a game that gets lopsided one way or the other. And I think if that would happen, it probably goes in Penn State's favor just the way the teams are built and it being a whiteout and everything. But, yeah, it should be another great game between these two teams. Hawkeye fan, uh, check your stats and take one team off of your comment there. All right, Corey, go to it. Take two, what do you mean one team? Take two teams off. What, well, take what Ohio State off Iowa the for sure. Against Michigan, other than, let's see, they lost in – no, and I'm not ripping Hawkeye fan, but I'm just saying they lost in 2019 to Michigan, lost in 2021 to Michigan, lost in 2022 to Michigan. They've lost the last three games. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just one in 16. What? Won, won the game in 16. One in 16. One in 16. Yeah. yeah. Ironically, right after they got curb stomped by Penn State. But anyways, uh, all good points, Marty, and and I'll say this: uh, I agree with you about Iowa not getting blown out. 